Imagine being offered free money only to reject it. Sounds crazy, right? Yet millions do exactly that. Welcome to StatStream, where today we're diving into the ultimatum game, a devilishly simple experiment that's making economists rethink everything they know about human behavior. Here's the game. You're given $100 to split with a stranger. You choose the split, they choose to accept or reject. If they reject, you both get nothing. Simple enough? Now traditional economic screams offer $1, accept anything above zero. After all, free money is free money. But reality tells a shockingly different story. In real experiments, most people offer 40-50% of the total. Even more mind-bending? Offers below 30% are often rejected. Yes, people are choosing $0 over free money. This isn't just academic curiosity. This game is exposing fundamental flaws in how we model economic decision-making, with implications ranging from salary negotiations to international trade deals. So why are we acting so irrationally? The answer lies at the intersection of economics, psychology, and evolutionary biology. Buckle up, because we're about to unpack. 1. The evolutionary roots of fairness. 2. Cultural variations in the game. 3. The neuroscience of rejection. 4. Real-world implications. 5. Advanced game theory concepts. 6. Behavioral economics insights. 7. The future of economic modeling. Let's start with evolution. Imagine you're an early human and your survival depends on fair cooperation within your tribe. In this context, accepting any unfair deal could be disastrous. It signals you're an easy target for exploitation, potentially leading to long-term losses far outweighing any short-term gains. This theory is supported by evolutionary game theory models. These models show that a population of fair players can resist invasion by purely self-interested players under certain conditions. In other words, our sense of fairness might be an evolutionary stable strategy. But it gets even more interesting when we look at cross-cultural studies. In Western societies, the average offer hovers around 40-50%. But in the Mashigrenga tribe of Peru, offers as low as 15% are common and usually accepted. Meanwhile, in the Au of Papua New Guinea, people routinely offer more than 50%. These variations suggest our sense of fairness isn't just hardwired, it's shaped by our cultural environment. But the existence of fairness considerations across all studied cultures points to a universal human trait. Now let's peek inside the brain. Neuroscientific studies have shown that unfair offers activate the anterior insula, a region associated with disgust and pain. Essentially, our brains process unfairness as a form of cognitive hurt. This visceral reaction often overrides the rational calculus of gain. But here's where it gets really interesting. Players who are better at suppressing this emotional response make more rational decisions in the game. This suggests that our irrational behavior in the ultimatum game isn't just a quirk, but a result of genuine internal conflict between emotional and rational processes. FMRI studies have also shown increased activity in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex when players accept unfair offers. This region is associated with cognitive control and overriding emotional responses. So, in a very real sense, accepting an unfair offer requires us to fight against our own instincts. Let's dive deeper into the game theory aspects. The ultimatum game is what's known as a one-shot game. It's played only once between two players. This is crucial because it eliminates the possibility of reputation building or retaliation which might influence behavior in repeated games. In game theory terms, the sub-game perfect equilibrium of the ultimatum game, assuming purely self-interested players, is for the proposer to offer the smallest possible amount and for the responder to accept any non-zero amount. But as we've seen, actual human behavior deviates significantly from this prediction. This deviation has led to the development of alternative solution concepts in game theory. One such concept is the fairness equilibrium, which incorporates players' preferences for fairness into the model. 
Another is the Quantal Response Equilibrium, which allows for players to make errors in their decision-making. These new models are part of a broader shift in economics towards behavioral approaches. Traditional economics assumes that people are rational actors always seeking to maximize their utility. Behavioral economics, on the other hand, recognizes that people often make decisions based on factors like emotions, cognitive biases, and social norms. The ultimatum game is just one of many experiments that have contributed to this shift. Others include the dictator game, similar to the ultimatum game, but the second player can't reject the offer, and the trust game, where players can choose to trust each other for mutual benefit. So what are the real-world implications of all this? 1. Negotiations. Understanding the ultimatum game can help in everything from salary negotiations to international diplomacy. Knowing that perceived fairness often trumps absolute gain can lead to more successful outcomes. For instance, in labor negotiations, companies might find that offering slightly higher wages leads to more productive and loyal employees, even if it cuts into short-term profits. 2. Marketing. Pricing strategies that feel fair to consumers can lead to better long-term results than those that maximize short-term profit. This is why companies often use charm pricing. Prices ending in 99 or bundle products together, these strategies can make prices seem fairer to consumers. 3. Policy making. Policies that are perceived as unfair, even if economically sound, are likely to face strong opposition. The public reaction to bank bailouts during the 2008 financial crisis is a prime example. Despite arguments that the bailouts were necessary for economic stability, many people felt they were unfair, leading to widespread public anger and the rise of movements like Occupy Wall Street. 4. AI and Machine Learning As we design AI systems to interact with humans, understanding these irrational behaviors is crucial. An AI trained purely on maximizing numerical outcomes might fail spectacularly in human interactions. This is why fields like AI ethics are becoming increasingly important, ensuring that AI systems can navigate the complex landscape of human social norms and expectations. 5. International Relations In international trade negotiations, understanding the importance of perceived fairness can be crucial. A deal that's perceived as unfair, even if it provides economic benefits, might be rejected due to political pressure. This helps explain why trade negotiations often involve complex give-and-take rather than simple profit maximization. 6. Education. Understanding concepts like the ultimatum game can help students develop a more nuanced understanding of human behavior and decision-making. This can be valuable in fields ranging from business and economics to psychology and political science. 7. Personal finance. On a personal level, Understanding the psychology behind the ultimatum game can help individuals make better financial decisions. For example, it might help someone resist the urge to reject a fair job offer just because they feel they deserve more. Looking to the future, the insights from the ultimatum game and similar experiments are driving a revolution in economic modeling. Researchers are developing increasingly sophisticated models that incorporate psychological factors, social norms, and cultural variations. One exciting area of research is in neuroeconomics, which combines insights from neuroscience, economics, and psychology. By studying brain activity during economic decision-making, researchers hope to develop more accurate models of human behavior. Another frontier is in agent-based modeling where researchers create simulated economies populated by virtual agents with more realistic psychology. These models can help us understand how individual behavior scales up to produce macro-level economic phenomena. There's also growing interest in how these insights can be applied to pressing global issues. For example, how can we design economic systems that balance efficiency with our innate sense of fairness? How can we create international agreements on issues like climate change that will be perceived as fair by all parties? As we wrap up, consider this. The next time you're in a negotiation, remember the ultimatum game. Are you making an offer that feels fair? Are you considering the other person's perspective 
and cultural background. Understanding these dynamics isn't just academic, it's a powerful tool for navigating our complex social and economic world. From personal relationships to global economics, the principles unveiled by this simple game ripple through every aspect of human interaction. It challenges us to rethink what we mean by rational behavior. Is it truly irrational to prioritize fairness and social standing over short-term gain? Or does our definition of rationality need to expand? These are the kinds of questions that make economics such a fascinating field. It's not just about money and markets. It's about understanding the complex tapestry of human behavior and decision-making. If this deep dive into the intersection of game theory, psychology, and economics fascinated you, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. This is StatStream, where we're constantly unraveling the exciting forces driving economic decisions and shaping our future. And speaking of shaping our future, you won't want to miss our next video, Inside the Secret World of Google Street View. We'll be exploring the hidden economic forces behind this ubiquitous technology. It's an eye-opening look at how economics shapes the digital landscapes we navigate every day. See you there.